What is going on everybody? Intimidation here with you and I'm going to be talking about environments and niches for ants uh, pretty much in the California area and uh, I'm going to be discussing you know just everything that has to deal with uh, uh, you know I'm going to be talking about uh, you know foothills and mountains and forests and such things so if you're not interested in that sort of thing now would probably be a good time to not watch this video. So anyway, moving on. So what you're looking at here are pictures of uh, California foothills. Um, these are regions that I've hiked in. Uh, this picture that you're looking at now is uh, Black Diamond Mines in California, Northern California. And it's in the Antioch region of the East Bay, if anybody's familiar with that. <clears throat> and uh, this was taken in spring. This is uh, when the grasses were still green. And uh, here's a really good shot of the valley that I, I was hiking in. And uh, really beautiful here in the winter and uh, to late spring. And uh, we had a lot of rain this year, but uh, usually uh, in these areas, you tend to find a lot of the arid species, um, arid areas or to, to moderate, uh, moderate uh, niche environment uh, ants, such as uh, Pocanomermex, Messer, Dory Miramax, Marmoca cystis, and you you find uh, Formica moki like all over the place in these regions. And uh, then, see, what I'm here to discuss is things that maybe you may not notice, or and uh, I'm I'm trying to encourage people who go out and look for ants to to look at things and uh, look at details and uh, you know look up in the trees, um, maybe break some old branches off of uh, of trees um, and take a look. Because there are nit there are environmental niches within broader niches. So you so I'm saying to you, okay, well here are the California foothills, but what about the what about you know in this creek on the dark side of this mountain where it's moister and there's ferns growing within the forest, you know stuff like that. I mean you got to keep your eye out. You got to look for uh, you know small details. Um, you know you keep track of where you find your ants, and uh, it helps you out for when you want to look for that particular species. So, I mean, like for instance, this oak tree here, um, oak trees provide a lot of food and a lot of cover and a lot of, I mean, it's a, it, the, the entire oak tree is an ecosystem, you know, and I've found uh, Chromatogaster, I've found um, Leometopum, which is a velvety tree ant, I've found, um, and there's supposedly uh, Pseudomyrmex, which uh, only I will I will get back to them later. That that's a that's a particularly uh, interesting ant to me, and uh, I still haven't found it, but they're they're out there. Um, I've also found uh, let's see, Prunellopus and Paris often uh, forage in trees for sap, and and uh, they harvest uh, aphids just like any other ant up in the uh, up in the tree uh, canopy. And uh, yeah, the, I mean th these are these are key features for what you want to look for if you want to find ant species. Now, um, this particular picture is different. This is something, at, this is a kind of a niche that I want to get into. It's, it's interesting to show. Um, it's sandy and higher elevation than the normal foothills. This is up at the very top of Black Diamond Mines where it gets, gets into the white pines. There's white pines. It gets a little more deserty at the top and there's a lot of sand. Now you find, you tend to find species that you don't see in, in the valley, like Marmacocystis, for instance, which is a honeypot ant, which is very interesting species. Uh, anybody who knows who, uh, what honeypot ants are um, knows that they, uh, they're they really interesting, um, as I will show you here in a second. With that said, um, I was just going to kind of touch on the whole uh, sandy area that I was talking to you about, which is, here's a screenshot of me. Um, at that kind of rocky, sandy area, which is kind of within the same niche as the foothills, except this was up the trail, just like, you know, another 10 minutes up the trail. So, and we, I tended to find, I tend to find other species that you don't normally see just, you know, uh, 10 minutes back down the trail, like this species here, which is Marmacocystis, and this species is uh, Testaceous. And it's a nocturnal honeypot ant, which I, which I found by accident. I was digging, you know, by a, uh, a manzanita tree, and I uncovered a nest by accident. There were there were yellow. These work the workers are yellow, um, which is indicative of a 
of a nocturnal uh, foraging species normally. And uh, yeah, I found this queen um, the next spring when I found out that they have flights on a particular day in spring if it's warm enough between the 14th and the 15th of March. And uh, here's a really good shot of uh, Marmacocystis and one of the features that uh, that will let you know that it's Marmacocystis. Um, the maxillary palps are very long and feathery on this species of ant, on this uh, this genus, and you can see them right under her head there. And uh, that's a good way to, to tell if they're a honeypot ant. Like if you have trouble discerning, I know some people had trouble discerning this from Penelopis in Paris, so there you go. Here's another shot of uh, one of my colonies that I, I raised, and as you can see, yellow workers. And uh, they love hanging from the ceilings of uh, setups, so if you have ever catch a honeypot ant, uh, try to design it so they can hang from the ceilings of the, of the setup somehow. And uh, yeah, so within this niche, I found two species that I've never seen before. I found um, this species here, and I also found uh, Marmacocystis mimicus, which is in this screenshot here. This is a diurnal species, okay? This is the species that's out at like 12, 12 o'clock in the afternoon in 100 degree weather, and they don't care. They're just, you know, zooming around. They're really fast, and uh, they're foraging up uh, anything they can find. And in this case, they found a uh, Formica moki corpse, which they're uh, bringing back to the nest there. But uh, I haven't located this queen, a queen for this species yet. I, I'm, I'm hoping I can find it one of these springs. So uh, we'll, we'll get back to you on that one. But uh, another species that you find in this niche is uh, Campanatus semitastaceus, which is a uh, another nocturnal kind of soil nesting species, and it's part of the uh, part of the uh, carpenter family. If you want to get kind of uh, you know the common name, it's the carpenter ant. But uh, this species loves to dig in the dirt. So uh, I, I happened along this mating flight that was going on, and I could I could actually hear the fluttering of their wings. That's what drew me to the attention of the ground, like right next to my feet, and there they were, just flooding out of this hole. Pretty nondescript hole, just a hole in the ground, and they're just flooding out of it. And the queens were so heavy that they were actually, these blades of grass here couldn't hold the weight of these queens. They were just kind of toppling over. But another interesting species, very interesting. I actually have a colony of this that's doing quite well. Uh, there's about, uh, I'd say about close to 40 workers. And uh, I've had that for about a year, maybe just just under a year. And uh, yeah, there's really pretty species, kind of a yellowish, orangish, to, and black combination, kind of bicolor. And uh, I think I have a few more screenshots of the, these queens mating. And uh, these are very large ants. This is a species of ant that uh, are of high interest to a lot of people because of their size. Um, and they're very polymorphic, which means uh, their worker sizes vary. Very, uh, very much so. Um, from size to size, variation is uh, polymorphic. That's what that means. In case you were wondering. Um, but here's a here's a shot of a couple more queens uh, as they're exiting the hole, and uh, I got really lucky with uh, taking some pictures of that. Like I said, so. And another another species you tend to find in this area on the foothills is uh, Pogonomyrmex. I think I mentioned them earlier. And I think I have some pictures of them in here. Yeah, uh, there's a picture up here uh, in view. It's uh, of a mating flight that I found uh, in spring. Again, this is a spring mating flight, and this is around the time when they uh, when uh, they had their first flight. Now, Pogonum myrmex have two mating flights. They have one in spring, in March, and see these are dates that I mark down when I locate. When you locate a a mating flight. When you find a mating flight, make note of the day and the time of day and when you find it. You'll find that when you come back the following year in the same day at the same time, you'll actually find that they're they're mating again. So make note of that stuff. It's very important to make note of where you found where you found this mating flight going on, what kind of environment it is. And in this case, uh, this is another shot of Pogonomyrix as a mating flight in the spring around March 14th. And it was about Oh, I'd say it was about uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, okay? And it was really warm. It was like the first warm day, first really warm day in the 70s that uh, that was during that month. And you go out, and I located these queens. And the same year, they did it again. So that's how I f tend to find uh, 
mating flights. Uh, I make notes of things and such. Uh, here's another shot of uh, the habitat that I was in. Uh, this is kind of like an underbrush kind of uh, canopy of trees growing over the the uh, pathway. This is manzanita um, spruce and a few pine trees mixed in and it's kind of rocky and the the path itself was sandy so uh, I, I try to make notes of that sort of thing and uh, sooner or later you kind of get the idea it's like oh well you know you tend to find ants in this situation or in this particular habitat in this area and you you kind of make notes of that in your head about you know where to find these particular species here's another uh, common species that I find in in this environment it's uh, Formica moki and uh, Formica moki is one of those species that it's kind of the ant that you always see you're kinda of tired of seeing it it's always foraging in the pathways it's it's uh, they're always doing uh, social carrying which is uh, an act that ants do to when they want to Look, when they have a new nest location, they recruit nest mates, nest mates by actually physically dragging them to the to the location and putting them in it. And then that ant goes back and carries another ant back with her, and vice versa, and just keeps multiplying until they're all moved in. And they just have a, this line across the pathway of just social carrying the whole time. So, but yeah, they're always out foraging and and uh, very active ant species. They're always up early and. Uh, you always see them. I've heard that Polyergus actually makes slaves of these in the valley, in which I've, I haven't seen Polyergus in the valley ever, but I heard it's kind of a rare occurrence. Keep my eye out for that. And uh, just like I said, I mean, it's just another environmental niche that I kind of keep keep in mind when I'm out in that particular environment that I I expect to see this these particular species and that's what I'm really trying to get at so when you guys are out and about you make notes and uh, you can you know you can discern for yourself well I'm gonna tend to find these species here uh, these are these are common these are species I'm gonna find in this area but then I want you to look even further into detail uh, you know look into little I mean these are little ants these are Dory Miramax and they're maybe not as noticeable at first but when you look closer you might see them and they like little sandy open areas and stuff like that and uh they are they ac they can actually get quite aggressive when they get uh, mature but uh just another just another detail that you might be overlooking like you might go somewhere and think well I've never found ants there before but you know just really go out take a look around you um take your time uh you know, uh, look in, like I said, look up in trees, look on bark, the bark of trees, look under the bark of trees, look under everything, you know, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully have some luck finding some ants. And this is just my conclusion for uh, environmental niches, Foothills, California. Thank you.